Greetings. Once again, this is Brother Ravana Noon, and I'm back on the scene. Well, what is today's discussion? This is part two to the last part, which is reasons why magic is practice. Again, we're, we were at number four, so let's continue to number five. To define what is possible in your life when your mind is focused. Limits collapse as the imagination grows. Magic purposefully binds the imagination to reality. What does that mean? To define what is possible in your life. Meaning that all these limits and restrictions and boundaries that are either self-imposed or imposed on us by society, family, culture, whatever the case. You as an individual have to start breaking free from those boundaries and restrictions. You have to use your creative imagination to see outside of a box. Better yet, not even see outside of a box. The box doesn't even exist. And when we're able to think, when we're able to think for ourselves, most importantly, because unfortunately what most people don't realize is that a lot of their thoughts are not even their own. A lot of these thoughts are programmed from our family. Our family is the first group of individuals who really program us into a certain thinking pattern or paradigm. Uh, our family is also responsible for a pigeonhole or putting us in a pigeonhole of what it is or what is not meant to be a, a person of the culture, a person of the family, a person of a religion, things of that nature are begun at an early age. As your imagination begins to expand, to grow, your limits begin to collapse. The limits and restrictions you place on yourself begin to deteriorate. And that is because your imagination is not restrained or constrained from a uh, pre-programmed sense. So you, you begin to actually expand your consciousness, expand your imagination, and you don't see borders anymore. You are actually able to do a lot more than you could imagine. Magic then becomes something more purposeful when it's backed by your imagination and your intention. It becomes something that becomes more uh, precise instead of wishy, washy, hoping, things of that nature. Magic becomes purposefully directed by your intention and your will, and your imagination helps bring it forth more. The problem is when people practice magic, they have limited imagination, and they think that they cannot accomplish anything. They think within a box. They think within a program sense, um, and they're not able to break those borders and boundaries. So what happens is eventually you just do magic in a sense in a Hollywood way where you think that all this hocus pocus like in Harry Potter and Lords of the Rings things like that is going to happen and that's not magic that's Hollywood magic real magic is your physical reality will match your subconscious or your spiritual reality but they have to be in frequency and in unity they have to match each other they're not just going to say, well, I want $50,000, but you're poor and broke. That doesn't work that way. You don't manifest it that way. You have to be realistic in your work, and your imagination has to be as well. Although your imagination is unlimited, it still has to be directed towards your physical reality. Number six. Satians, Luciferians, vampires. We exalt life and celebrate both the spiritual and the physical parts of life. We don't just focus on one. We don't just focus on the other. We actually celebrate the physical existence as much as the spiritual existence. We enjoy the physical existence as much as we do the spiritual existence. We celebrate every moment of our life. We indulge in things that are going to help us grow for every purpose that we have declared for ourselves. We don't shun shit. We don't sit back shit. We don't say, oh, well, you know, I had a dream. 
and in this dream such and such and such happened. But then when people try to show you that these dreams are all manifesting for your subconscious mind, and there's something within your subconscious mind that keeps re reoccurring in dreams or bringing things into your dreams, you refuse to accept that. No. When we celebrate life, we accept every part of ourselves, whether it's the, the fucking beautiful bull, the beautiful shit of ourselves, or the bullshit about ourselves, the negative or the positive, the good or the bad, in the left-hand path, in occultism, there is no such thing as really good or bad. Those are shit, it's just relative terms to help you identify dualism or polarity. But outside of that, them shits do not exist because it's based on your perception. So, we don't and deny or ignore things, we accept it and embrace it, utilize it, and encompass that whole reality about ourselves to transform and become even greater. Once one of our focuses may gravitate towards one or the other at any given moment, or at different periods in lifetime, meaning you could be more spiritual one moment, more physical the next moment, it doesn't make you any less spiritual or any more physical, it's just how you vibrate at the moment, what you resonate with at the moment, and at that moment you live it in totality, 100%, shunning nothing, embracing it all, and living it all. The Luciferian spirit, the Setian spirit, the vampire spirit, reminds us that it is important for us to maintain a healthy balance between the physical and the spiritual. That one doesn't supersede the other. One isn't greater than the other. They're both essential and they're both necessary. So we maintain a healthy balance between both. Although we may fluctuate from one side to the other, to from one thing to the other, from time to time, we still learn how to balance that so that our life could be in a more, uh, in more totality, what would be true balance, not this superficial right-handed path, light sider mentality. Oh... Everything is beautiful. I love everything. I love nature. And then ignore all the issues you have inside. And act like Jesus is going to take it away. God's going to take it away. Goddess is going to take it away. The universe is going to take it away. Bull fucking shit. The only person who could take anything away and add on is you. And you have to do the work. And nobody else can take that shit from you. Nobody else can make it better for you. Only you can. All that other shit is hocus pocus, superficial uh, temporary bullshit and answers. So you have to focus on taking control of your life and stop fucking letting other people tell you God is good, Allah, Yahweh, they're gonna save us, doomsday, bull fucking shit. You the only one, dude. You the only one, sister. You the only one that could take and master your life and control your life and make what you want into reality happen. But you got to be balanced to do that and not ignore shit about yourself and not act like everything is all hunky-dory. That's bullshit. Deal with the truth. Deal with your own reality and stop fucking around. Finally, number seven. Personal experience is paramount. Don't assume something is so by the word alone. Boy, I cannot tell you how strong of a statement that is. How the hell can you tell somebody what a pizza tastes like if your ass never fucking ate pizza? But motherfuckers will try to say and tell you that shit all the time. Oh, yo, do this, do that. But have you experienced it? Most, most motherfuckers going to have to say, no, nah, I haven't experienced it. That's the real reality. I haven't experienced it. So how the hell can you tell me anything about a relationship? Tell me anything about something I would like to uh, indulge in or some of my desires unless you fucking tasted it yourself, experienced it yourself. In the left-hand path, we don't avoid them shit. Meditate my desire way for having sex or meditate my desire way for materialism. That's fucking bullshit. You're living on the planet Earth. You're going to always be surrounded by materialism. And you it's necessary for materialism for you to survive in this world. If you think it's not, fucking go and live in the woods as a hermit and retire from life, you dumbasses. So the reality is you have to experience life. And one of those things is you may have things you want to indulge in. You could be 
a fucking healthy ass eater, but every so often you want some potato chip. Fucking eat that shit. It's not going to kill you. Don't fucking listen to the religious dietitians. Oh, it's going to kill you. It's going to no bull fucking shit. Every so often you're going to indulge in things like that. And what happens when you indulge, you learn to gain control over those things. So you don't indulge as much as you do. You don't go on these eating binges. You have control over it because you experienced it. So you know what it's like. You understand it from the inside out. So you don't understand it. Every so often I may want this. And there's no guilt involved, no pain, no pain, no pressure, none of that shit. You just indulge in it. But people, unfortunately, do not allow themselves to do that because of a religious mentality. Of a fucking overly spiritual mentality. Indulge, live, and experience. But be the master in control so you don't go excessive into your indulgences. Excessive into your desire. You still maintain that balance and control. Sisters, if, you, if you're in a relationship... And your man is not getting you off. But you you are, are desiring and, and fantasizing about another dude. You and your man got to come to real terms and grips and deal with that shit. Deal with that reality. Because eventually somebody going to sneak out the house. It's best for y'all to be honest and open and discuss this shit for real. Than somebody sneaking out the house which then creates some, a lot of emotional problems. Sisters act like they don't. That, that they don't fantasize. And men think like women don't fantasize. Y'all fantasize just as much as men. Y'all desire other men just as much as men desire other women. Y'all want just as much as we want. But you've been pigeonholed. You've been put into a cubby, uh, a box, and said women have to be like this. And that's not true. Women have just as much sexual desire as a man does. Women have just as much of that power inside of them to succeed financially in business in education, in anything. Don't let anybody ever limit you because of your gender. That's all bullshit because in spirit there is no gender. Okay? So don't let them limit you here in the, in, on the physical plane when in spirit there is no gender. So be you. And don't stop yourself from experiencing life. Because that's the problem with people nowadays. They're too quick to stop their experiences because they're afraid, they're fearful, they're afraid to experience their dark side, they're afraid to go into the abyss and face themselves, so they run to the Buddhists, they run to the fucking Muslims and Sufis, and they run to the fucking Christians and the Kabbalah. Yeah, that, some of that shit's good, but some of that shit's still spooky. And you'll understand why as I go on in further videos explaining why things are spooky, or why things are just not really as beneficial as you think they may be. What we do as Setians, Luciferians, Vampires, those on the left hand path, we experience life and we challenge ourselves to be greater than we were yesterday. We don't sit back, we don't live in this peace, love, and light illusion of life stagnation. We challenge ourselves every day. What can I do today that is greater than yesterday? What can I do today to challenge myself to be greater than yesterday? What can I do today to face myself and challenge myself to overcome the bullshit within myself? What can I do today to be greater than yesterday? Don't wait. Don't hesitate. You only have one life to live and you're living it now. You're living it today. Tomorrow's a long way off. So Challenge yourself and experience life. And then affirm all things by your own standards. How you see things. Not see things based on your closed parameter, your closed conditioning and programming. But as you do the work and expand your consciousness and expand your perception, you start to affirm life based on new standards, based upon your evolution and growth. Think of what you might do with the pinnacle of inspiration. Behold the perfect vision of your own cunning, creativity and life and manifestation. The path of the crooked serpent is now beginning. So in other words, be you, master you, go within and overcome. Then you become that God who takes control and manifest 
a real reality, not a reality based on somebody's programming or conditioning. The left hand path is definitely not for anyone and everyone. The left hand path is a path that scares the living shit out of people because they need a God, they need some external thing. And unfortunately my melanated people, my African Americans, my Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Haitians, my Puerto Ricans, my Dominicans, my Cubans, my Colombians, my Brazilians, we motherfucking spooky. We're fucking so right hand path and so far removal of our original path because the left hand path originated in ancient Kemet for all you Egyptologists and Kemeticists who think you know so much it originated in Kemet okay and we've been so far removed from that and we've made everything so spooky and fluffy and so sweet and lovely and nice and that's not reality homeboy homegirl that's not the truth the real reality is Mastering self has always been the path least walked by many. The left-hand path is the path that is against the norm. The left-hand path is about self-mastery, self-overcoming, self-deification. If you can't handle that shit and you want to make excuses and blame the white man, and blame the black man, and blame some other man, and blame some other woman for your own bullshit, your own failures, Path ain't for you. Stay on that right hand fluffy, fluffy shit and keep blaming and, and, and making excuses for your failures. But we on the left hand path don't make excuses. We take control of our lives and we manifest success, whether it's physically, financially, spiritually. We master every aspect of ourselves. So check out our show, Awakening Universal Minds, which is on talkshoe.com. Once again, Awakening Universal Minds, which is on talkshoe.com which happens every Thursday at 9 p.m. This Thursday, we're going to be discussing the origins of the left-hand path and how it relates to you as melanated people. So come strong, come on. And most of all, ask questions, because this is a question and answer class. I like some people will tell you question and answer, and the motherfuckers want to ramble, 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 and never let you ask any questions. We let you ask questions, anything you would like. Because we fear no no questions because we've done thorough research. And we're humble enough to admit, shit, I don't know. I'll get back to you if we don't really know the answer to what you're seeking. So, we, once again, this is Ravana Noon and Awakening Universal Mind Show, Thursdays, TalkShoe.com at 9 p.m. Peace.